the sun. Without this enormous fireball, life on Earth would be impossible. The energy it emits in the form of light and heat is generated by fusion, that is, by merging atomic nuclei. On our small planet, scientists want to imitate this process and use it to generate electricity. However, what works on its own on the sun under extreme conditions becomes highly complicated on Earth. In worldwide cooperation, solutions are being looked for to ignite the sun's fire in a fusion power plant. This global effort has resulted in the construction of one of the most impressive examples of large-scale international cutting-edge research and engineering in Greifswald at the Baltic Sea, the Wendelstein 7X Fusion Research Facility. The device itself is not designed to generate electricity from fusion reactions, but is intended to solve a key problem of fusion technology, as devices of other types can so far only be operated in short pulses. Wendelstein 7X is the world's largest facility of the stellarator type. Its goal is the practical proof that continuous operation is feasible in a stellarator. To understand the complex machine, let's first look at one of the six-ton magnets used to produce a magnetic field that ensures the plasma does not touch the inner walls as it would otherwise cool down immediately. The special shape and configuration of the magnets could only be calculated with the help of supercomputers and provides the plasma with optimal conditions that are suitable for continuous operation. 20 additional magnets ensure that the magnetic field can be varied and optimized for the experiments. The magnets enclose the plasma chamber in which the plasma is generated. Its inner wall consists of metal and graphite plates that can withstand high thermal loads of up to 10 megawatts per square meter. By comparison, a space shuttle had to withstand only 6 megawatts per square meter when it re-entered the atmosphere. The complete fusion device weighs over 750 tons. A strong support structure carries the magnets between which very high forces act during operation. Numerous cables and cooling pipes supply the plant. The magnets are cooled to minus 270 degrees Celsius. At these temperatures, they are superconducting. That means once an electrical current has been fed in, it can flow for any length of time without electrical resistance and maintain the magnetic field permanently. In the remaining openings, measuring devices are placed with which the researchers monitor and control the plasma. The outer vessel encloses the complex interior of which almost nothing is now visible. Inside the vessel, a vacuum is created. This is necessary for controlling the density and composition of the plasma. Only then, one milligram of hydrogen gas is injected into the 30 cubic meter plasma through a small opening at the bottom. Microwave radiation with a heating power of several million watts transforms the gas into plasma and heats it up to 100 million degrees Celsius. This makes it about 10 times hotter than the core of the sun. These temperatures are sufficient to fuse atomic nuclei in fusion reactors and thus generate energy. Since the magnets near the hot plasma are cooled to extreme low temperatures, the temperatures in fusion reactors vary from some of the hottest to the coldest in our entire solar system, over a distance of no more than several centimeters. To operate Wendelstein 7X, additional systems are needed. The systems for heating the plasma, the power supply, the cooling generators, the data center, and finally, the control center where everything is monitored and controlled. If the Wendelstein 7X project can successfully produce plasma with fusion-relevant properties in continuous operation, it would be a huge breakthrough in fusion research. 
Fusion technology has the potential to revolutionize the energy supply of mankind.